Hello everyone and welcome to Van Tech Corner. This is another open the RT 10 GBPS routing test lab with the HPT620 Plus and the Dell QLogix 57A10S dual XFP Plus adapter. So from here we have the Dell Optiplex 7010s and it is using the Melanox Connect X3 XFP Plus adapter. It will have a 10 GBPS link to my one port, which is one of the XRP Plus port of the Dell QLogix. And the other XRP Plus port will be configured at LAN. And then it is going to connect to my PC, which is also using the Melanus Connect X3 adapter. So this is the whole network diagram. And let's add back to the physical overview of the device. This is the HP T620 Plus and as you can see, I have installed another Ethernet adapter to use as a one port or LAN port so that I can configure the package and install the driver for my 10 gigabit Ethernet adapter. So this is the Dell QLogix 57A1S XFP Plus adapters and this adapter comes with a full hay bracket. But fortunately, I talked to short block from the Iceware channels or the Zimabo channel, and he helped me to design a 3D print low profile bracket. So after several attempts to print and test out, finally I have a version of the 3D print low profile bracket. So if you have a 3D printer and you have this same network adapter, you can give a try with that. Alright, so now I'm going to install this one on my HP T620 Plus. Very good. Alright, so we can see that the adapter fits perfectly well. And all right, so let's close the lid and we are ready for the test. For this video, I use a USB right to boot up OpenWRT and I have this onboard network adapter right here and this second network adapter. So one of them will be a LAN port and the other one will be the one port. Here is the network adapter connected to my PC. Let's put it in and let's powering on the ball. So I assume this is the one port and I'm going to connect the cable from the upstream router to it to install some package first. All right, so there are some noise in the background it is from the old fan of the Dell QLogix adapter so please accept my apology on that so let's go and check the network interfaces let's go to chain adapter options and let's see we have a link up and running and the router is now reachable at 192.168.1.1 now let's go to 192.168.1.1 and log in. First, let's set a root password. And let's go to system shortwave and update the list. So we are right, the onboard Ethernet adapter is now a one port, and the second Ethernet adapter, which is Intel one, is a LAN port. Now I'm going to install this KMOD BNX2 package to install the driver for the Broadcom. Not foul, something is wrong, let's check it. Let's refresh the page and search for the package. Perfect. We can see that the kernel module for this one had been pre-installed. Very good, so let's go to network interfaces and let's see if the device is available there. If we go to devices tab, we only have Ethernet 0 and Ethernet 1, which is not right. Let's go back to the shortware and install the other package. 
All right, let's hit install. So it looks like the kernel module has been pre-installed, but not the driver. So we will need to install it manually. Perfect. The installation is successful. Let's go to network interfaces and go to the devices tab. So right now we should have Ethernet 2 and Ethernet 3. So one ending with B0 and the other one ending with B2. So now I'm going to do a blink try and I will add one of the interface to the LAN bridge. So maybe Ethernet 2 and let's hit the configure button. The bridge port will be Ethernet 0 and Ethernet 2. And hit save and then save and apply. So this is the DAC cable from my PC and I'm going to connect it to one of the XRP Plus port on the network adapter. Alright, let's go back to the network interfaces and let's see. We can see that the Ethernet tree, the Mellanus Connect X tree adapter is off and running. We have the link speed and we have the internet connection, which means this port is actually the Ethernet 2. Alright, that is good. And now I'm going to change the one port to Ethernet 3 because I know that this is the other XFB Plus port. So the one port, let's change it to Ethernet 3. Save and then do the same for Ethernet tree save and then save and apply let me bring up my Dell's XFF server so this is the Melanus Connect X3 XFB plus port and let me put it aside let's connect the power cable and use a DAC cable to connect the Dell's XFF to my HP T620 plus Very good. So now we no longer need this cable. So I am going to remove that and connect to the Dell. And lastly, let's powering on the Dell's Optiplex 7010. Alright, we can see that the XFB Plus adapter is now lining up. Let's go back to the PC and continue the setup or the testing. Very good. We can see that the one connection is up and running and it received the IP address from the upstream DSCP server. So now all the network adapter has been disabled and all the traffic is routing through my Melanus Connect X3 adapter. Very good. Let's try to ping the upstream server. So ping. 10.42.0.1 and perfect we have the response so let's see if we can reach the open speed test server at 10.42.0.1 and then 3000 and perfect we can see that it is running at the moment let's go to network and then firewall and make sure the shortwave uploading is still disabled Right, let me minimize everything, open the command and go to 192.168.1.1, log in, htop, okay, so we need to install htop as well, opkg install htop, and let's run another command for top. Alright, we have 4 cores and 4 GB of RAM. Let's proceed with the test. We are running at 4600 MPPS and we can see that the CPU is at 
54% idle. For Updot, we only have 2200 Mpps. Is this correct? Let's refresh the page and try again. So this time we have some problem with downloading and it is at 3000 or 4000 Mpps. Still, the CPU is at 55% idle. And unfortunately, the upload speed is still around 2200 Mpps. Now let's proceed with the iPub 3 test. First of all, I will need to start the iPub 3 test server. Very good. Let's go to the test client. For iPod 3, we are running at 4.7 gigabit per second and the CPU is at 66% idle. Let's run it, but longer. Alright, we are running at 4.7 gigabit per second with 68% CPU idle. Let's turn on the software offloading and run the test again. Let me go to network firewall and turn on software offloading. Hit save and apply. And then, as usual, we are going to start with open speed test. Let's go. Alright, this time we have 4400 Mpps downloads. They are not much different from the last test. The CPU is now at 37% idle. Still, the open speed test results still the same, around 4300 Mpps for download and around 2000 Mpps for upload. Let's run it for another time. This time we managed to reach 4600 and then very quick it dropped to 3500. and there is no much improvement on the upload speed and right now if looking at the HP T620 Plus and the Dell XFF 7010 we can see that the LED on the network adapter blinking like crazy let's proceed with the open speed test let's proceed let's give a try with the iPod 3 test We can see that the iPod 3 throughput is a little bit higher. It is running at 4.8 gigabit per second. And the CPU is now at 73% idle. Let's give it a light try. Alright, so there is no much different in the iPod 3. So there is no much different in the iPod 3 throughput between the shortwave offloading on enable and disable. So there is no much different in the iPod 3 throughput when we turn on and off shortwave offloading. 
let me go to the OpenWRT configuration and make sure that we already have the package steering all right unfortunately it will not enable so let's enable it and give a last try so this is open speed test And we can see that there's no much difference. Still, we have around 4,300 or 4,004 Mpps. And so there's no much difference. We still have 4,300 Mpps download and 2,000 Mpps upload. And I pretty believe, and I believe that the speech, and I believe the IPUB3 test should be the same. Oh we can see that it's running at 8.86 gigabit per second so far we have test out the HPT620 plus and the Dell Qlogix 57A10S at FP plus port adapter and we managed to get 4.9 gigabit per second throughput with IPUB3 test and at I checked the HPT620 Plus had a PCIe exiting connector, but the physical connection is on the X4, as you can see right here. And according to the PCIe generation, it is Gen 2. And if we take a look at this table, we can see that for PCIe Gen 2, the X4 connection should able to carry 2 gigabit per second. However, we have the transfer rate per length is only 5 GT per second or this is the raw calculation and if we convert it to the gigabit per second, it will be around 4 to 5 gigabit per second at per the data I found from this one. So perhaps we already reached the limits for PCIe Gen 2 maybe this information is not correct and if you have any idea or any information any expertise on this field please share in the comment section thanks for watching and see you all in the next video